Hello everyone, nice to have you back. Today's topic is again the Ki Chetronic. We have done some videos already covering this very, very topic in how to check several components involved with our Ki Chetronic. How to check their functioning individually and isolate it one by one. I will show you the info cards later. The Ki Chetronic has been developed by Bosch years back and was being mounted in several models such as the 300, 420, 500 and after 1985 of course on our 560. Also in other models such as W126, W124 and also on the W201 baby bands. Bosch has done a diligent job in developing this reliable system provided, really provided all components involved work together hand in hand. The Ki Chetronic in comparison to the K Chetronic. Our Ki Chetronic controls the injection electronically with the help of relays and an injection control unit which is sitting underneath a plastic cover in the passenger footwell. And since there are many many components involved to have a smooth running engine, the failure or malfunction of a single component ruins this entire and well-tuned system. And this is today's topic. We will take a closer look at several causes of a badly running engine. The most common problem is, and it does not matter if it is a 300, 420 or so on, too high revs of the idle. When the car is standing and you have it in position P or N, the idle is way above a 600 with a warm engine, maybe un 800 and even way over a thousand revs with a war mansion, which is a clear sign that one or more components involved in this are out of tune. One issue is starting the car with a cold engine in the morning. You are late already and the car does not start and having big difficulties in doing so. Sounds like a real Monday morning. Another awkward issue is starting the engine when warm for example you drive up to a petrol station stop there to pump gas walk inside to the teller to pay your bill come back to the car after five minutes and it is idling without starting absolutely embarrassing ah in your rear mirror you see the other drivers gloat over your misfortune you are the proud owner of a classic Mercedes and it does not want to start. Awful. Nightmare. Absolutely nightmare. Let us now get into the details of these ignition problems. We start with the electronical components of our Ki Chetronic. Number one, the Ki Chetronic control unit, picture above on the left. This one is being installed in the footwell on the passenger side hidden behind that plastic cover underneath the carpet. We have had this video when we have dealt with the potentiometer right at the beginning of that other video. You see a short scene where this component is located. When your idle is rough and way too high, start with this component first. Disconnect it right here. If all of a sudden the engine is running smoothly, you found the culprit, so you can exclude all other components. Please do not forget to disconnect the battery first to avoid a voltage peak when disconnecting and reconnecting the ignition control unit. Make sure the key is also in position, switch off to avoid damage to, to the control unit since it is a quite expensive part to replace. Second, another electronical component to be checked on is the overvoltage relay above on the left, which is also located in the footwell of the passenger side with our 107 models right above the fuse panel. This small part is protecting all other electronical components from damage due to overvoltage. It has a tiny built-in 10 ampere fuse, so if you are already there in the footwell, you can check the fuse. If damaged, if it is, it is easy to replace since it costs a couple of cents. If the problem is being fixed and solved afterwards by changing this tiny fuse, 
It is nearly effortless and dirt cheap. We stay right here on the passenger side and remove the inside layer of the glove box. Behind you find on the left hand side the idle control unit. It is being named in the workshop manual as unit N8. This unit is controlling quite a lot. So we are back in the engine bay. The air filter housing has been removed. This part here is the flow divider of our 560 V8 engine. This black part at which I am pointing now is our mixture regulator, our electromagnetic link which is regulating the mixture of air and fuel accordingly. How to check its functioning will be explained in another video. Let us have a look at another component which is involved in the Ki Jetronic system. On the left hand side, right behind the baffle plate, a little below the flow divider, right here we see the potentiometer, also enlarged on the top left hand side, with three pins, this is the potentiometer. There was a video about this one recently, how to measure and check its functioning, since it determines the position of the baffle plate right here, which is also responsible for revs too high or too low. Since we are already here, have a look if the gas rods, the linkage here, is under tension or even bent. Therefore the baffle plate is already in the wrong position, which affects the idle. This could cause overly high revs. So if this gear is already bent or damaged, the baffle plate is open. But too wide already, we do have too much air in the combustion mix which is causing high revs. In front of the baffle plate we have the idle actuator, shaped like a cigar. I have made a video about checking the functioning in that other video. I have included the removal and the testing method of this idle actuator. This one here has two poles. Above on the left is the info card to the video in which I have explained the interaction between potentiometer and the idle actuator in that other video. Have a look. We have disconnected the idle actuator and all of a sudden the revs went up remarkably. So if this component is without current, the built-in valve opens completely. Therefore too much air is added to the mix of air and fuel. So if this component is not working properly, the revs are too high. It is all about revs. Have a look as well at all vacuum and pressure hoses. Check them all. As well check the spots where they are being connected. Check for cuts and porosity. The yellow lines are commonly used for the central locking system. This makes it a little easier for you to distinguish them from others. Maybe you find the end of a foam rubber hose without another hose sticking out of it. Have a look if it simply has disconnected by falling off. The Kiai Chetronic Injection Control Unit is constantly checking on several other units involved, as well as the coolant sensor sitting right here. Also a NTC sensor which is conducting currency easier with lesser resistance the warmer it gets. I have made another video in which we were testing this one by connecting it to a multimeter and the ground. The info card is above on the left for this video. The air filter housing has been removed as well as the conducting pipe of the air intake. At the front end of the air intake pipe should be a sensor which is measuring the temperature of the air being drawn into the filter. We are now talking about the fuel pressure. In another video we have measured the fuel pressure before the fuel is entering the fuel divider and if the prescribed pressure is being held for enough time. In addition to that you can also check the fuel pumps which are behind the rear axle underneath the car, hidden under a protective plastic cover. Do they produce enough pressure and hold the pressure long enough in coherence with that? Also the fuel valves which are sitting at the engine. About this issue I have made three videos. The three videos were about disassembling, function test and the cleaning of them. If they are clogged 
or spray the wrong way how to clean the places where they are being inserted into the engine. As shown here, the valves may not spray a concentrated jet but have to spray in a wide diameter to improve ignition, a clean combustion and lower fuel consumption. Another topic is the ignition coil, ignition distributor and ignition cables leading to the spark plugs. Same story in every combustion engine, the before mentioned parts have to work hand in hand. We have checked this on the engine M130, ignition coil, ignition distributor and the cables. There are three methods by using a multimeter on how to check the before mentioned parts in an easier manner. In another video we have checked the needle of the ignition coil. I will show you the info cards in a second. Also check diligently all cables leading from the coil to the spark plugs. If they are broken, damaged, maybe with porous rubber around, which would allow water to get in. Also if rodents were doing some damage to the cables. This also causes a rough running. This is a quick done joke. Check the resistance of each cable with a multimeter. You need to have a resistance of about a thousand ohm. If for example the resistance hits above a 20,000 ohm, it is way too high. Just replace this cable to make it work again. We have now mentioned all components which work hand in hand in this ignition system. You may have noticed it is complex, it really is. I had shown you the info cards too, how to check and replace every one of these components. Further on I will include a link to these videos below at the end of the description and the title of the video. If you start looking for the damaged components, do it systematically. In my opinion it is, it is absolutely useless to buy all components in advance and simply change them by mere chance. A new potentiometer, mixture control unit, idle actuator, at the end you still have the same problem and a hole in the wallet for nothing. I keep repeating myself, do it systematically and check these components one after the other. I would recommend you start with the electronic components which are behind the dashboard first. Start with the ignition control unit which is in the footwell on the passenger side shown here. Disconnect it as a result the engine is running on emergency and a hammer away disconnect to avoid a voltage peak otherwise you might damage this expensive component while trying to solve one problem you are creating another one. This part is expensive, do not forget. Then connect the battery again and start the car. Then you see if the problem is still there. For example you start the car on the emergency program with a disconnected uni, the rest are stable. Then starting the car either when cold or in operating temperature. Or the car fires up right away which it didn't do before. Then you are already halfway done. You are already on the right way to find the damaged component. In this case it could be the ignition control unit. Next step would be to check the over voltage relay if the 10 ampere fuse is blown out. And if you replace this fuse by paying 10 cents you got away cheaply. Hope you have liked the video. It was a complex topic I have to admit. Hope I could give you some useful advice concerning a rough running with the key eye jet droning. Would love to have you back next time with another episode. Bye bye everyone. <laughs>